Shield dropping first started to gain recognition when a group of players from Arizona began to realize its potential. Players like Axe and Sung saw the strength in this technique, and from there a hardware mod that involved notching for shield drops coordinates began to gain popularity. Surely enough, this mod would become so essential that the community would adopt software mods such as UCF so that it could be standardized for everyone. Despite the fact that several years have gone by since shield dropping's inception, there's remained one shield drop method that people use almost exclusively. This is the original method that Axe and Sung popularized. This method works by buffering your shield horizontally to shut off roll, then rolling the stick down to your shield drop notches. While it's fine to view this as the default shield drop method, it isn't the only one. There happens to be another method which deserves just as much recognition for its ability to compensate for the Axe method's deficits. That method, as well as some other shield drop related tips, will be the focal point of today's video. Before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe if you're a fan of this type of melee content. The first chapter of this video will cover shutting off roll. Shutting off roll is a key step towards shield dropping, but it's important to know why this is the case. On a software level, melee doesn't actually designate the corners of the coordinate plane as the best locations to shield drop. These locations happen to be the best ones due to the existence of notches, which make the thin shield drop line realistic to pinpoint. From there, the melee community agreed to adopt UCF in order to remove the need for notches. UCF achieves this by increasing the quadrant's shield drop range from 3 Y values to 11. Recently, I introduced a mod called 1.03, which operates under the belief that the shield drop range should be made to span the entire quadrant instead. Regardless of which of these mods you're playing on, there's a clause that you'll need to bypass in order to activate the modded shield drop coordinates. That clause is shutting off roll. The reason shutting off roll is included as a clause is because melee prioritizes roll over shield drop, and so there's no way to make use of shield drop notches without shutting off roll first. The way to do this is to point the analog stick horizontally for four or more frames prior to the first eligible roll frame. From there, the shield drop coordinates underneath will become accessible. The implication this has on gameplay is that it's almost always best to buffer the analog stick horizontally during lag states. Air dodge landing lag, for example, lasts 10 frames. You can begin pointing the analog stick horizontally as late as frame 8 within this window, and it'll suffice for shutting off roll. Frame 8 works because your character needs to shield for a frame before they can roll, and so frames 8 through 11 will count as your 4 frames in this case. The same concepts apply to other states such as aerial attack landing lag and getup animations as well. Whenever you're in these states, it's usually best to prepare the analog stick for a shield drop. That brings me to the alternative shield drop method which will be the focal point of this video. I call this the diagonal method. The purpose of the diagonal method is to compensate for a weakness in the axe method, which is the fact that it doesn't protect your character's feet. Melee's metagame has evolved to the point that shield poking someone who's attempting an axe method shield drop is common, and so it's important for the defender to have a workaround. This is where the diagonal method comes into play. The diagonal method is performed by preparing your analog stick in quadrant 3 or 4 rather than horizontally. This suffices just as well for shutting off roll. However, the catch is that pointing in the quadrants protects your character's feet, and so you're able to defend against attacks that would normally poke you. From there, you can shield drop by rolling the analog stick back up to the horizontal position for a frame and then lowering it back down to the shield drop range. The diagonal method would appear to be strictly better than the axe method based on the explanation I just gave. However, this isn't the case. The advantage the axe method has is that it only requires one stick motion for a shield drop to be performed. This means that an axe method shield drop can be performed more quickly if you aren't attacked. What's interesting though is that if you are attacked, then the downside of the diagonal shield drop method is negated. This is because your character will incur hit lag and shield stun frames during which you can roll the analog stick back up, then back down without incurring any downtime. If done properly, then your hit lag and shield stun frames will absorb the time it takes to perform these stick motions, and you'll shield drop on the first possible frame. On the other hand, if you aren't attacked, then the diagonal method will take longer to complete than the axe method, as you'll have to waste time by rolling the stick up first. To recap this video, there are two shield drop methods worth choosing from. It's always advisable to shut off roll by buffering your analog stick horizontally before performing either of these methods, but from there they're different. The first shield drop method is the axe method, which is good for shield dropping as fast as possible from any situation. However, the axe method has the downside of leaving your character's feet exposed, which makes it exploitable. This is where the diagonal method comes into play. The diagonal method has the advantage of protecting your character's feet. From there, the downtime that's needed to perform two stick motions can be concealed if you're hit as you can perform these motions during your hit lag and shield stun frames. However, if you aren't hit, then the diagonal method will take longer to complete, as it'll take extra time to roll the stick back up to the horizontal position. Recognizing when to use the diagonal method instead of the axe method is extremely beneficial. This strategy will surely increase in value as shield poking continues to become more common. In my next video, I'll be covering yet another shield-related strategy that every competitive player should know about. That video will air next week, so make sure to be here when it's up.